The Alliance Alive arrived pretty late in the 3DS's life cycle. Interest in the 3DS had already waned, and that was especially true for JRPGs on the platform. Much like a lot of the later 3DS releases though, this one was an absolute gem. It's up there with the best the 3DS has to offer. I'm overjoyed that it has a new lease on life in the form of the Alliance Alive HD Remastered for the PS4, Switch, and PC. I have said in the past that the Alliance Alive was one of the best looking games on the 3DS. It took a lot of inspiration inspiration from Bravely Default, but with a few aesthetic tweaks it became prettier than its inspiration. These real-time zoomed out shots of towns and cities were strikingly beautiful on the 3DS and equally as striking in HD. For a game that was so obviously designed around the hardware constraints of the 3DS, I wasn't sure how well the visuals in particular would translate over onto HD consoles, but it looks great for the most part. The pre-rendered cutscenes are noticeably blurrier than the rest of the game, this is an unfortunate side side effect of pre-rendered scenes essentially being basic video files. Video files that in this case would have had a resolution of 480p or less. There are limited things you can do to upscale low resolution video, and it's actually one of the better results I've seen in recent times. It doesn't suffer from giant artifacts and other graphical anomalies like some of the scenes in Final Fantasy VIII Remastered for example. There is only one other thing that doesn't quite translate perfectly to a HD platform, and funnily enough, it also involves the cutscenes. There is no voice acting in the Alliance Alive HD, which isn't automatically a negative. I don't think games need voice acting. There wasn't any in the 3DS release either, but the dual screen format and perhaps handheld gaming expectations made it a non-issue. See, the cutscenes, which generally have really nice direction, look like they were made to be voice acted. The text scrolls along the bottom of the screen like subtitles. They look gorgeous, but you're mostly hit with an eerie near silence. The game's minimalist approach to sound and music, which works so well for the rest of the game, sort of exacerbates the awkwardness of a lot of the cutscenes. It's far from being experience ruining, but man I wish they shelled out just a little to at least voice the pre-rendered cutscenes, it would have really set this game off. I was never worried about anything else the game has to offer not working in HD because the truth is, none of it feels out of place in the current gaming landscape. The story and characters are both well written and interesting, the aforementioned minimalist sound design is great at creating an atmosphere, and the gameplay is a wonderful mix of everything that made JRPGs of old so good with little of the bad. Combat is of the turn-based variety, but pretty far removed from a standard turn-based system. Most of this has to do with the way characters get stronger. They don't get XP and they don't level up. Instead, stat boosts will be randomly awarded after battles. Most of the power scaling will come from equipment though. There are some exceptions, but most of the characters can use most of the weapons and armor. You can really build the party any way you'd like. You'll learn new skills and power-up skills simply by using the weapon or piece of equipment. I'll admit that it does sound like there is a lot of RNG involved, and there is to an extent, but the variance is very tight. What I'm saying is that it's mostly predictable. Characters learn new skills and get power-ups very regularly. It's very unlikely you're ever going to be in a situation where one of your characters is leagues behind the others because of RNG. The actual process of battling itself will feel very familiar. Attack, defend, magic, and a special move meter like a limit break are all here. There's a formation system here too, and it's actually rather important. You gain some pretty significant boosts from different formations, and you'll find yourself switching depending on the boss. There's a talent tree system as well, but it's fairly basic and slow to make progression on. It just allows you to make your characters more efficient with the weapons you've given them. A faction and reputation system are also here. There are multiple different guilds which you can gain favor with and level up. You'll also be able to recruit NPCs, and all of this offers a number of perks, one of them being assistance in combat when you're in range of one of their watchtowers. The game world is a collection of locations, like towns and the aforementioned watchtowers, connected by an overworld. I've always loved overworlds in RPGs, and much like Nino Kuni 2 last year, it feels like a breath of fresh air in the current era. There are some cool mechanics on the overworld too that encourage exploration. Gliding, puzzles, hidden items, points of power, you'll gradually unlock more things to do on the overworld as you progress through the game. 
everything is packaged together nicely by the story. Written by the man behind Sui Koden, it progresses at a fairly brisk pace. There are plenty of constants throughout, the world is divided and there is a clear hierarchy, with demons ruling over much of the rest of the world. It's been 1000 years since the demon took over, and simple things like a blue sky have become myths and legends to humans. The story will switch perspectives and explore smaller scale stories on your journey toward the end of the game. Some characters and world building get less attention than others, but overall it's a really great piece of storytelling. If you played the original, there isn't really anything new here for you, but so few people saw the original that this did deserve its second chance. With the beautifully crisp updated visuals and wider reaching availability, the Alliance Live HD Remastered is a better version of something all Golden Era JRPG fans should want to check out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks for the liking, subscribing, and the sharing!